All right, thank you, Severin, so much for this excellent presentation. Um, our last speaker of the day, or our last presentation of the day, deals with public and private care in the Netherlands, and I believe there's also some comparison between be, between Finland and Netherlands involved. Um, she is the head of research at the National Consumer Research Center, so Kuluttajatutkimuskeskus Suomeksi in Finnish. Uh, she holds PhD in health policy and management and uh, has also worked and studied in the United Kingdom for several periods. So please welcome Ms. Minna Karkainen. All right, thank you for this opportunity to come and meet you and hear about the age in Europe. So, uh, my name is Minna Karakainen and I work as a head of research in the Uni National Consumer Research Center. And uh, as the Finnish uh, audience might know that uh, we are working under the central government at the moment, but we are going to be part, part of the University of Helsinki beginning of the next year. So we are going to be rather independent research units there as well in the Faculty of Social Sciences. And, um, well, actually, I mean, uh, other speakers are native or have moved there and <laughs> lived there, but uh, I'm not Dutch. <laughs> and uh, I, have a, I haven't actually never lived in the Netherlands, but I have done a lot of uh, comparative uh, long-term care research in my former uh, working place, which was uh, University of Eastern Finland, where I was working over 12 years before I came to work in the National Consumer Research Center last summer, so, sorry, summer 2013. And uh, in my research project, we have had uh, colleagues and partners from the Netherlands. So uh, I have actually checked this information that I have here last night with my colleagues. So facts should be okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, then let's move forward. So I also have some facts and, facts and figures in here. But uh, I kept uh, Finland here just uh, because we are in Finland and we are trying to think uh, new possibilities for Finland. But uh, my main focus is in Netherlands, so uh, when I'm talking about the elderly care, so I'm talking about that in Netherlands. And um, what about these uh, figures? Uh, they are just some background information, so I'm not going very e in depth to these. And, um, so what makes uh, Dutch uh, system unique is that uh, in Finland we have this universal and social insurance system and in Netherlands uh, they have this insurance based system which is uh, official, I mean everybody has to have it uh, but still they are only like, a, 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 if I remember right, 98.9% 98 .9 who have the insurance even if they have to have it. Um, there's something about the Dutch population structure, uh, which is quite similar that uh, in uh, all Europe. And uh, then, if we go in the main point about the actors and markets in the Dutch healthcare system, so um, in Netherlands, the client is in focus when planning, financing, organizing the care, and it's uh, in focus in good and bad since the. Uh, this means that uh, clients have uh, a very high level of freedom to choose insurance company and the care provider and a high level possibilities, possibilities to impact the care. But in bad, this means that the system itself is leaning to individuals' duty to take care of themselves and uh, be active. So this means that uh, uh, in Dutch system, they don't usually speak about patients. Uh, well, maybe in the very um, in um, emergency care or something like that. Usually, when we are talking about elderly, they are never talking about patients. They are always clients, uh, or in um, in policy level, they are customers since uh, they have this status of customers. So I come to these questions a little bit later when I'm talking about the details about the insurance. Uh, 
And um, uh, what my interest area in the Dutch system is um, uh, are the questions concerning about the freedom to choose and devel delivery and uh, service funding system and its flexibility to different situations. Uh, how individuals can affect and modify their services based on their needs. And to go further, uh, in the Dutch system, there's usually, um, usually Dutch, pe Dutch people are very uh, satisfied with that, their system, even it's uh, rather expensive and uh, it's also the future challenge of the Dutch system. But, uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. But uh, the back, in the background, there's an um, uh, idea that uh, when they are giving individuals the feeling that they can participate to their service planning, it increases also the quality of life, and in the long run, it decreases the cost of the health welfare system. And um, even if I would like to say that Dutch example could be an answer to also to our welfare problems. Uh, there's also some problems in the Dutch system as well. Um, uh, so, uh, in this picture, we can see the health, uh, Dutch welfare markets and its actors. There are three key players, which are insurance, uh, insurance uh, providers and uh, patient. Well, in here, this is from the WHO and they are calling, I mean, linked to the patients. When I was earlier said that usually when we are talking about the clients or cons consumers. So the clients are covered uh, by the obligatory insurance which provider they can decide. And the clients are free to choose the health insurance policy. And usually the insurance uh, have different levels and that it can be customized to individual needs, uh, needs and life situation. So usually there is this uh, part that everybody needs to have and you can take upgrade up to into your individual needs with your own cost. And uh, in uh, Inside this system, the client choices are very important and the role of the active client is uh, the key issue in this system. Um, and the clients uh, have freedom and power to choose their care, but they are also responsible for the take care of themselves and uh, well also they are very actively taking part of the volunteer work and when we were talking earlier about the informal care and formal care so um, in Dutch system uh, volunteer care volunteer work is uh, very common of course there's uh, uh, in uh, Central European countries, volunteer work is also very in common. But in uh, one example of the Dutch um, elderly care home, uh, which was like a place, um, uh, it's called Humanitas. In the, it, they have um, places in all over the Netherlands, uh, and uh, I've visited the, I think three of them in Rotterdam and two in Amsterdam. So they have uh, this uh, kind of system that they have, they are usually like a normal kind of buildings uh, in community and uh, old people are living there and uh, they can buy the apartment to themselves or they can rent it. But uh, the whole thing is uh, going on like that, that there are only very few paid um, carers in the building. So, um, for example, the school pupils in the nearby schools, they are giving aid with um, uh, computer issues and uh, also they have this kind of lists that uh, what uh, kind of um, errands they have uh, in line. For example, somebody wants to go uh, to the theater, so they call to this certain person. Uh, so uh, voluntary workers are also, they can do the things that they like. Um, so um, but then uh, about the actual care system. So the, usually the healthcare providers are private and they are they are responsible for the provision, for example, preventive, primary and secondary and long-term care. And preventive uh, care is mainly organized by the public sector. Uh, disease prevention, uh, health promotion and health protection is organized by the municipalities. And in Netherlands, they have uh, what we are now heading to, <laughs> is that uh, actually they have um, three, 443 municipalities, but uh, 29 municipal health services are doing the things that 
the, uh, I mean, which are tasks for the actual municipalities. And uh, in this system, the GP ro role is uh, very important as a, G as a gatekeeper. So they give a referral to specialists and in the long-term care, um, insurances are responsible for purchasing long-term care, inpatient care, but they have to dele delegate these tasks to care offices, what uh, in uh, Netherlands they call Sörkant. Uh, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> um, but um, patients who want to organize uh, the, their own care, they may apply for the personal budget. And the, these things about the personal budget is a um, thing that uh, could be um, uh, uh, issue for the whole day or election series. Uh, and in Finland, we have uh, seeked out that could uh, the personal budget be one uh, one answer to our problems or one possibility to sort our um, issues. But um, in Netherlands, they are reorganizing the uh, personal budgets at the moment. So that means that uh, after 2010, uh, they haven't had any new. Uh, personal budgets uh, only, I mean, only with a very tight uh, restrictions. And um, usually, just the, because I have the numbers, that how much the, there was increasing about in the personal budget between in 2000th century. So, so um, there was a um, uh, that um, in 2009, 10% of all care receivers were using the personal budget, but approximately amount was 14,800 euros. But the cost increased very rapidly. For example, between 2002 and 2010, uh, it went from 0.4 billion euros to 2.2 billion euros. So uh, it seems that it's not uh, a key, I mean, it can't be the only one solution. So nowadays they don't. They are cutting back the personal budgets, and uh, there are new comings. Uh, I mean, new people coming to use personal budget with very strict orders, and uh, but they are still using it, especially in the old, old elderly care. See that what I was? Oh yes. Uh, then I just because I'm not going in the those um, because in uh, Netherlands they have a very various uh, insurance uh, insurances and insurance systems so i'm here just talk uh, some headings about the um, avbz which is uh, covering the old age as well and uh, this is uh, under construction at the moment and uh, mainly it uh, includes the same elements than other insurances as well which means that uh, there's freedom to choose care provider and it usually provide the care providers are usually private and it's funded by taxpayers personal contributions and also through government budget and the government budget is uh, increasing every year so um what is the, uh, the what is the impact for the uh, this insurance type for the elderly people and for the consumers that means that uh, they can uh, they have a freedom to choose uh, the place they are taking this insurance and they usually have this one de desk principle which means that from the one place you can get your insurance and also they are guiding you to the right services and usually the agree agreements are very clear uh, for the clients as well. And for the insurer, it means that uh, there's a, a one budget for the insurer and uh, uh, it has uh, commercial opportunities, which is also one um, key issue at the, I mean, the challenges that they are having at the moment. And uh, for the healthcare provider means that uh, they have um, deals with the with the insurance companies, and uh, they can they claim by policyholders. So the <coughs> challenge is coming uh, next year is that uh, uh, this uh, um, long chain care insurance, which have which was invented in the 1960s, so it's going to change uh, to quite totally in the beginning of the next year. It's going to be part in two 
two, uh, I mean, uh, it's going to be like a two insurances, and the Social Support Act is the one is coming new. And this means that municipalities will have to support citizens in participation to society and organizing home help, transport facilities and uh, house adjustments. And uh, there are these expectations written that citizens take care of themselves as much as they possible. And the state budget for the non-resident care and long-term care will be lowered. Um, and, um, well, they are just uh, listing the, these things that I earlier said about these uh, latest reforms and the wings of change. And uh, so this is this uh, transferring from the institutional care to home care services, which is quite similar that we are doing in Finland and I think in almost all of the European countries. And uh, uh, what I mentioned earlier, cutting down the, cutting down the personal budgets and uh, telehealth, uh, oh, well, uh, I think that is one thing that we are also developing in Finland, and but in Netherlands it's one key issue for the elderly care as well. Uh, volunteer work and informal care, they have a very strong support for the citizens as well. And uh, tightening personal budgets and decreasing users. And uh, when I was saying that uh, clients uh, or person-centered care is uh, one basic element for this Dutch system. Uh, then just a few things about the future challenges, uh, which are well, all of them are about the same. But if I could talk with these changes about Finland or other countries as well. So there are changes in economy in Dutch system, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, the uh, uh, expenses are quite high, uh, extremely high in long term care and increase in service demand, uh, well, to aging society and uh, all among other things. And uh, decrease in professional labor force and technological development, welfare promise, personal budgets and personal contribution. So this is one thing uh, which is uh, considering, especially long-term care. I mean, personal budgets can be used, but the uh, amount of the personal contribution is uh, now uh, one topic that they are discussing about and uh, how to maintain solidarity and control of the costs is one key issue. And they are just listed some, um, if you want to read about the Dutch system more. <laughs> All right, that's about that. Yeah.